Kempe Gowda was trying to construct the mud fort for around 20 years, but parts of it were always crumbling, which never allowed it to get completed. Kempe Gowda was very stressed out and he apparently approached a tantric who told him that the solution for the completion of this fort is a sacrifice of a pregnant lady. Now, this is something extremely strange and people don't know how to even react to this because at one end, he is distraught, he is stressed out because the fort is not getting completed and at the other hand, the solution given is something that is not acceptable to any human being. The name Bangalore stems from Bengaluru in a reference to it in a Ganga inscription circa 890 AD found near the Begor Temple, Begor. Before we proceed any further, let us go to the Begor Temple and look at that inscription. The Bengaluru Inscription This inscription from around 890 CE contains the first known mention of the name Bengaluru. The hero stone records the deaths of Bhuttanapati, son of the chieftain Nagattara and of Pevona Shetty, Nagattara's house son, either an adopted son or an attendant in the Battle of Bengaluru. This means that there has been a place named Bengaluru for at least 1100 years. This has seen a lot of history here and uh, this is also a scene of a battle that is uh, described uh, in history between uh, uh, the Brits and the uh, and, and, uh, Tipu's army. The third Anglo-Mysore war where uh, there were British prisoners who were actually holed up in a dungeon here. So as you can see, the if you pan the camera, the dungeon is actually to my north-east corner uh, if I am standing here facing that. So if you can see that opening right there, that was the way to the dungeon. So public doesn't have access, but nevertheless, uh, um, eventually the British got the better of, of the Tipu army and Tipu was forced to sign a treaty uh, making several concessions uh, to the British. And I think in 1799, the fourth Anglo-Mysore war is when Tipu was killed by the British. Really, I would say, a historic place. Uh, it has seen several kingdoms and kings and uh, definitely I would recommend everybody who comes to Bangalore or if you are a resident of Bangalore, come pay a visit to the fort, um, do visit the temple as well. Uh, these are places which are steeped in history. One day Kempe Gowda had gone on a hunting expedition and he came to the same place that I am standing now and he saw a rabbit chasing a dog which was very peculiar and very strange because it, the reverse is usually the truth. Uh, the dog chases the rabbit and the rabbit never chases the dog. But however, he came here and he saw a rabbit chasing a dog and dog running for its life. And he thought this was very strange. But this incident definitely left an impression and he called this place as Gandu Bhumi or the land of hero and heroics. And considering this incident as an auspicious sign, he decided to construct his pete here or the town here, which is called as Bengaluru Pete or the Bangalore city. So Kempe Kauda constructed a mud fort around this place. Inside the mud fort, he created his petes called as Chik Pete, Bangar Pete and Cotton Pete. But before completing the construction of this fort, there's a very interesting story that I would like to narrate. Kempe Gowda was trying to construct the mud fort for around 20 years but parts of it were always crumbling which never allowed it to get completed. Kempe Gowda was very stressed out and he apparently approached a tantric who told him that the solution for the completion of this fort is a sacrifice of a pregnant lady. 
now this is something extremely strange and people don't know how to even react to this because at one end he is distraught he is stressed out because the fort is not getting completed and at the other hand the solution given is something that is not acceptable to any human being and but finally kempe gowda's own daughter in law lakshmamma she learnt about the solution and she was a pregnant woman one day she came in front of this fort at the middle of the night and uh, sacrificed herself and you know she killed herself and offered that as a sacrifice of a pregnant woman when i learnt about this i was devastated i mean it's very sad why would any pregnant woman would want to kill herself because when you're pregnant um, you know as a parent myself i know that the life of the child is more important than mine i think every parent will vouch for it that they always put their child's life before their own so how did a pregnant woman uh, come to this uh, as of today also... as far as we are concerned this channel is concerned uh, we do not subscribe uh, to these belief systems or superstitions but we are only trying to act like historians trying to document what happened back in the day so uh, our own take on this is that um, what we feel is that was a time imagine the 1600s the early 1500s was a time of extreme turmoil and volatility in this part of the world what we call as south india there was political vacuum after the vijayanagara empire collapsed so basically there was nobody left to defend this hallowed land that we call karnataka or bangalore right and uh, the moguls were invading this place they were holding this place and it was constantly subject to invasions so the the people who were living there here the locals were always they were they felt threatened by these invasions because it was a matter of their survival and uh, so to that extent uh, a fort did make sense so possibly in my head the way i look at it is that the daughter in law of kempe gowda perhaps took it upon herself that uh, her life was insignificant in front of the lives of the community which was in danger um, in the absence of a fort and she went on to take this step um, which is very sad and regrettable but uh, um, uh, but you know in a very weird way uh, for kempe gowda it kind of worked out for him not that he wished for it not that he you know ever even gave it a thought but uh, once his daughter in law learned that this was the only way she took this step uh, and made a huge sacrifice out of herself to help the larger uh, community uh, who was living in tenter hooks at that time so we have to see it in that vein and by doing this act she rose to the level of a goddess and today she is worshiped in a temple in kormangala in fact in the uh, eastern quadrant of bangalore so i would say that uh, uh, her sacrifice is not in vain uh, uh, definitely but it is something that nobody would emulate ever because uh, uh, you are basically doing this whole thing on faith and from a purely scientific perspective um, nobody in their right mind would do this everybody is focused on self preservation if you are a pregnant woman you would want to defend the life of the child that is growing within you but nevertheless uh, this was a story worth narrating that the foundations of bangalore actually built on these kind of stories that very few people know and it is worth knowing their sacrifices so that it doesn't go in vain thank you now let's continue about chikadevaraja wadaya story Bangalore was a territory owned by the Maratha king Ekoji. Ekoji was ruling Bangalore sitting from Tanjore. And Ekoji wanted to sell Bangalore for two reasons. One, ruling Bangalore sitting from Tanjore had become a logistical nightmare. And the second reason is Marathas had become financially weak due to the repeated attacks on them by the Mughal emperor Aurangzeb. So these were the two reasons why king Ekoji wanted to sell Bangalore. And he seemed to have said that he will sell Bangalore to the highest bidder chikka devaraja wadayar bid bangalore for rupees 3 lakhs and when the sale agreement was ready to get signed between the marathas and the wadayars mughal ruler kasim khan stepped like a hawk and captured bangalore from the marathas so the sale agreement that was supposed to get signed between chikka devaraja wadayar and king ekoji got cancelled 
and Chikka Devaraja Wadiyar paid Rs. 3 lakh to the Mughals and bought Bangalore from them. This is the story of Bangalore and let's continue to the next story. This magnificent temple is the abode of Lord Sri Venkateshwara. It is one of the very ancient temples of Karnataka and Bengaluru in particular. This temple was built by Chikadevaraja Vadiyar who was a staunch devotee of Lord Vishnu and he chose this place to construct a temple. This temple exemplifies the Dravidian and Vijayanagara architecture. Kote Venkatamana Swami Temple at KR Market, Bangalore this temple is constructed by Chikka Devaraja Vadiya as a part of the fort that was constructed by Kempe Gowda. So if you travel to Bangalore by air, you will know that Bangalore International Airport is called as Kempe Gowda International Airport. It's only because the founder of Bangalore is Kempe Gowda and he built Bangalore inside a mud fort which was around 7 to 8 kilometer radius and inside the fort he created many petes called as Chik Pete, Bale Pete and Cotton Pete. Um, what Chikka Devraja Vodaya uh, did was he envisioned the importance that Bangalore had and uh, he created roads inside the fort, inside Chikpete, Bale Pete, Cotton Pete and he created shops for these uh, sellers to come and uh, sell their produce, whatever be it. So he created an infrastructure where the seller could come uh, to this market and sell whatever he had and the buyer could come and just buy whatever the buyer wanted to at a very fair price. He also uh, introduced many measurements, weight weight measurements such as uh, Pavu, Ardha Pavu, Seru, Ardha Seru, Dadiya, Pancheri, many measurements which were not standardized until then. So he standardized his weight measurements, he improved the infrastructure, which, and he also introduced policies which helped these traders trade a lot more. So it, Bangalore became a thriving commercial place which continues to do even so. Like today also if you go to any Bangalorean or, or any person who lives in Bangalore, they will vouch for the kind of commercial market that Chik Pete, Cotton Pete, Bale Pete is even today. Even today it thrives and all thanks to this visionary, this uh, ruler called Chikka Devaraja Vadeyar who foresaw this and created the needed infrastructure back then for what we are enjoying it today.